Okay, so let's just, you just, you just for the fun of it, let's go ahead and take it seriously. <laughs> oh dear. So uh, let's, let's get into lecture mode. And so yes, we will return to what you're doing, I promise. Okay, so, so to make our course truly convergence, we have to do, of course, add some Naps. internets. Naps. <laughs> some sleeping convergence, yes. Um, so you read a chapter about digital journalism, right? I'm going to sneeze. Cow. Doesn't it go away if you say cow? It doesn't, but someone told me that. Anyway, will journalism go extinct? Because everyone is turning to the internet for their news. Do you think that, especially print journalism, will it go extinct? You, you read about it, but what do you think? I don't, no? I don't yes. think it will. Darian says no. <laughs> Just because I think there will still be people that want to physically, you know, people that aren't into technology. Okay, technology. how about when all the old people die off, though? I still think there's people like my age that aren't as into technology. Okay, there's some people who are younger who aren't necessarily into technology? <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah. when it gets to the point that you have to pay five dollars for a paper, though, I mean, you're going to stop buying papers. Yeah, papers already dollar for the weekday paper it used to be that was the the Sunday price, but it's inflation. But I think that depends too on just how hard set you are. Again, like some people just want to, to have the physical change. book yeah. or the physical paper. They they don't want to read it on a tablet or whatever. So. Okay. So to be honest, I saw Chris earlier with the physical print newspaper he went and got one right how many of you on a weekly basis have been at least getting one free after all it's newspaper for the course no anybody at least once a week you've been picking it up mm. reading it or even if you've been buying it just about three people mm. okay all right three out of eight <laughs> anyway um it's almost good good way to look at it glass is half full <laughs> glass is half full so the problem with if print journalism were to go extinct, whatever you want to call it, print journalism, the old newspaper reporting, um, the, the, the old process approach to, to journalism where it's not just citizen journalists or bloggers, if that goes extinct, then there's a good possibility that journalism as we know it goes extinct, right? Because a lot of the so-called new journalism methods, they are uh, sensationalistic. They are based on uh, shoveling things, you know, from other sources and, you know, downright stealing stuff from print journalists. Because where do, you know, Google News, Yahoo News, where do they get their news? Well, a lot of them get it from print journalists, right? And those, there's, it, it hasn't been a good way for them to get paid for providing that to the rest of us, right? They've tried, they've experimented with different ways to... Um, They've experimented with different ways to try to um, get advertisers to fund, you know, newspaper websites and that sort of thing. But there's still not a good way to uh, to be able to 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 fund, you know, the salaries of a staff, newspaper staff. You Comments. Said, you said that uh, print journalism basically feeds the like online journalists. So if it went extinct, wouldn't everything just go away? Well, it's interesting. What what would happen if these, you know, a lot of these print journalists. Uh, if their actual physical uh, paper, you know, the, where they work goes away, well, um, you know, you, ha you still have the, um, you know, the, the news stations, the TV stations, radio, right, they're doing some original reporting, and they do some internet type looking articles, right, so they, they summarize the, their uh, video news into the text, so that would probably would be what would take its place, but we wouldn't have a lot of investigative journalism, we wouldn't have a lot of detailed um, articles like you do in, in print, so it's a concern. There'd be something, but it is a concern, and I, I fear that it may, you know, we, we really don't know for sure, the author does not know for sure of our text. So he talks about how journalists have to become backpack journalists or multimedia journalists, one-man bands, and that would be you know, so far it's been, we've talked about this, it's been video, right, Michael, um, Chris? Yeah. It's been video. Video, uh, like video and uh, internet and... Um, right, but so far we haven't gone to internet and now we are, right? right? So the idea that you were going to just be a print journalist and a TV a journalist or you just get some raw footage to put in the newspaper's website now, we're adding internet. Uh, journalism into it. And 10 years ago, it would have been unheard of to, to attempt a course like we're in right now, to try to converge all these things in one course. They were all separate courses, and there wouldn't have been an internet course at all. Yes? As video, um, I, I think it's been around uh, about as long as newspapers. 
like because like they came out with TVs in the what, 40s, 50s. Right, but newspapers are centuries old, right? And they, they did have newsreels, like movie, if you go to the movie theater, you would see a newsreel, but, but a video is still relatively new compared to newspapers. Newspapers date back, you know, 1700s, colonial era, 1600s, you could date, as long as there was a printing press, you know, there were some form of broadsheets or just, you know, one sheet, one pamphlets, they started out as pamphlets, so that it's, that newspapers have been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. Okay. So really, technically, you have a converged course that you're in, that you're finishing up, but even this isn't converged enough, because you should be doing things like tweeting the news, I should be making you do that, and um, Facebooking news, and, and believe it or not, someone in a news station, TV news station, would be hired to do those things. You think, well, that's so ephemeral, it's so uh, fleeting, and you know, how can you hire someone? But they are more really organized about this, and somebody who's really good with social media uh, will sit there, and I met the gal who did that at the Mississippi station this last summer, and she looked depressed, because she never got to go outside. <laughs> that's your job. That is that's Melissa. Job. So that's look at Melissa. Job. It's horrible. Now you look don't ever do it. <laughs> share the screen. Okay? Yeah. Share the screen. You don't know what weather it is outside. Yeah. She's in the studio um, newsroom portion of this TV station, and uh, in your in ra a radio yeah, station, right? Yeah, it's even worse for radio. It's I even swear. worse. Yeah, I feel like so that people it's often, you know, it. it's funny because you're maybe the most savvy about social media of anyone there, yet you're the one who's cut off from everything because you don't go do original news. You're at a computer desk the whole time. So it's kind of, there's an irony there, and, and the person becomes depressed, and man, she looked depressed. She's a young gal, like Melissa, and I, I don't know if, I think they end up going to do other things, or hopefully they get a promotion and they no, do it's fine, the next thing. When you have to tweet about a million things that you it's not part of, it's just, it's just tedious, really. It's yeah. tedious <laughs> after a while. It's fun probably at first, because you yeah. see, oh, how many people are looking at this? What are the comments on that? Yeah. Oh, I wonder why there's more comments on this and that, and you, you kind of analyze yeah, yeah. everything, but after a while it's like, uh, Oh. Okay, so the difference. One of the big things in your chapter was what's the difference between the digital stories, the print stories, and even TV stories, right? And one of them had to do with, um, with time, of course, timing, timeliness, big news value, but in particular with uh, what can you do to the online story. You can't do the print story. Change it, Change it right, and update it. Right, time stamp it, have little updates, right? Um, so that's, that's one thing. What else? There are other things too. Well, I don't know if this might be the updating thing, but you talked about how they can kind of tease the story, get attention, build attention to it, and then <laughs> gradually. Okay, like TV, you mean, uh, on TV? Or? Well, you were talking about how um, they can post like a headline and then Oh, okay. So, so like she's referring to you don't have the details yet, so you just do a head. Look for that because you will see that eventually. They a uh, big news story is coming in. We first post a headline, and you, as the reader, you try to click on it. It doesn't go anywhere. And then a few minutes later, literally a few minutes later, it does click to something, or there's a little paragraph underneath. And then a few minutes later, there's an article, more of a four pa paragraph article underneath. So that is almost like a tease, but it's almost just to have something up there. Clickbait is what yeah. it's called. Yeah. Clickbait. Clickbait. It's the same. You click on it. It's but it might be because it, they just are literally working on it as, as we are trying to click it. All right. So it might not be intentionally deceptive. Um, okay, so they really gave a good example of what if the quarterback breaks his leg. Do you remember that story? Where was that? That was, uh, so they start off with what? This was on the quiz. Chris, do you remember? Tweet. Tweeting. And then they have another tweet. Do you remember that? They follow up tweet. And then they do a blog, a special blog just for sports. But what was the downside of that? What was the downside? Because they gave the good and the bad, you know, kind of the upside and the downside of each form. Tweet, there's the limited in characters, right? Not everyone, everyone reads tweets. Um, they get lost in all the other p tweets you get. Uh, a blog, if it's the sports blog of a newspaper website, then what might happen? They're very need bigger stories or tucked away. So okay, it's tucked out. away. You might not find the story. All right, so this is really good. I really love that they do that, the downside and the upside to each form. And then they have the internet stories, isn't that right? From the football. 
and then later you get the print story. Now, with all that, why well, don't need to see the print story? I have all this other information, right? Well, actually, the print story sounds pretty good because what do they add on top of the information about him breaking the leg? They have all these neat things. Quotes and graphics. Quotes and graphics. One was that little cartoon. What was that? Like Shows a little. How you can get how his leg is injured. Okay, how, how someone gets their leg injured in football and, and cartoon form. All right, pretty intense. Okay. Okay, so there are other news blogs that are completely removed from a newspaper or, you know, a, a, a print version. There are some famous ones, too. Can you think of any famous ones? In fact, some of the most read websites are news blogs. And they're kind of, sometimes it can be kind of sleazy. Nobody? Nobody knows this? Dude, I yeah, right? I don't know if that counts. What is it? News, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, TMZ or something? This, there, are some, um, there are some blog news blogs that are not affiliated with a print, a, a actual hard copy um, news outlet, right? And there are t at least two very famous ones. One's a conservative one and one's a liberal one that a lot of people read. But they're kind of sleazy that they just kind of throw everything on there. There's one that pops up on my Facebook because my aunt likes it. It's called like the Blue Nation Review. I don't know if that's Okay, that. Blue Nation Review. Yeah, it's a Democrat. Okay, okay. I haven't heard that, but you know, I'm, not real, I'm not really into the blogs. One would be no, the Huffington Report, oh, uh, Huffington Post, Post, Huffington Post, Post. big one. Yeah. Right. The other one, the Drudge Report, would be the conservative one of that. Okay. Now, like I said, some people find this. Wow, you know. They, they kind of, oh, no, no, don't look! Don't look! Don't look at that! Yeah, I see you looking at that. Okay, that was my thing. Oh, it's still there! It's still there. No, that's something else. <laughs> don't look. Did you see me? My, my pathetic attempts to hide that? Okay. That was, that was the... Uh, you, you, good, you don't even know. Good. Don't look! That was the, um, the, 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 the showdown. The quiz ch challenge showdown. Okay. Yeah, too bad. But anyways, <laughs> you couldn't... There, that was just the one, one question. Yeah? It was in your mind. Oh, you're just, oh, ooh. <laughs> I can yell at her from here. I'm loud. You know that. Okay, so the Drudge Report, the formatting, they haven't changed it much. I've never heard of Drudge. This became famous in the Clinton era during the, uh, the is that when it became, it, they broke a big story. That seems too long ago. Might have been the Bush, the Bush, the Bush document scandal. Uh, no, that's not it. I'm showing my, uh, my lack of knowledge. Anyways, you see, then they ha they uh, they often will tease a big story up on top of their the name of the website here, okay? And it's just huh, all of these link to stories, okay? You should tell me that I'm doing that, okay? All semester long, we've had <laughs> we've had played tug of war with that, okay? But the Huffington Report, similar the formatting, it's like. Mm. Huffington, Huffington Post. Okay, so these are two of the famous news blogs that um, that are not directly affiliated with a print version of something. Okay. The Huffington Post isn't. It? Oh, it's all online. I believe so. <laughs> I thought it was busy Yeah. Okay. All right, but they they uh, this is a little more respectable looking. I like Huffington Post. As yeah. you yeah. see, this is. Um, That's Elizabeth Warren. She's yeah. Yeah. from um, yeah. Massachusetts. Yeah, yeah. That, that, I'm, I'm, it's a pity that was on the quiz. Oh. All right. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to mention, and then, we are, then we're done with that, yeah. Most news websites do resemble blogs to some degree, okay, because they, uh, they will update stories from the top if they're ongoing stories, right? They, contain, they like containing a lot of links and photos and maybe some video, audio clips, but hopefully the more respectable the blog or publication, 
the more um, you know, the, the, the more fact checking and the, the more very careful, deliberate formatting they're doing and, and you know, design. Whereas, you know, if it's if it looks like it's thrown together, if there's a lot of typos, you know, that's a problem. Okay, I think that's it for that. My fellow Andrea Okay, so now we want to review our prizes.